Hey VC, how's it going? It's Billy coming at you today with uh, kind of a, a mixture of things. I've got uh, a few things here that I just picked up from my local record store today, uh, a couple cassettes, and then a huge box of things that I uh, picked up after I traded in uh, some stuff a month or so ago, maybe, maybe even a couple months ago um, at, at my local record store. So, um, yeah, what I did is I went through and I uh, had totally organized um, my rock and metal collection, uh, which I, I guess I would say uh, conservatively I probably had about seven or eight hundred pieces probably, but there were also a lot of duplicates in there. Um, and it was just, just hard rock and metal. Uh, on on those things, so there was some pretty pretty decent stuff, some some standard stuff as well as some decent stuff. Um, I went through and uh, made sure everything was organized, sleeved um, in uh, poly sleeves or mofi sleeves. Uh, Brandon is the reason that. Uh, so I, let me, let me just go back here, and Brandon, Mr. Hall of Fame, is the reason that. All this is is uh, happening or has started. So Brandon has switched over to these um, these Mofi type sleeves. Let me just show you uh, something here real quick. So uh, the resealable, uh, super clear um, Blake. They're the, they're the Blake type uh, resealable sleeves. Um, a handful of my other friends use them as well. Um, I really was against them in the beginning, but now I love them wouldn't have it any other way So what I did is I I liked the super clear uh, Sleeve, but I decided I wanted the easier access to the albums So uh, I went with the Blake style with the uh, open top um, Thing I did not like about those was when you file the stuff uh, bookshelf top style it was really hard to read the uh, label on the spine because there was a seam there. Well on these Blake type uh, Resealable when you put them in this way where you can open them on the side and get easy access to the record You don't have to pull the Jacket out like when I open this up. I can get right in here to the record I don't even have to take the sleeve out pop it right back in it's easy access in and out but you can also see there's no seam on the uh, on, on the spine so it makes for uh, easier on these old eyes so I decided to switch over everything in the collection to these Blake style sleeves and that's what I was doing I was uh, I was changing over everything in my uh, I started with the the hard rock and heavy metal uh, just because it was easier to tackle there were only like I said around seven or eight hundred pieces to do uh, but when I started doing that I was making sure everything was also logged into discogs and I also um, was taking the best pieces from those like so let's say uh, Led Zeppelin a uh, copy of Led Zeppelin 4 let's just say for instance I may have had uh, half a dozen copies of that what I did is there's no sense in me having half a dozen copies of that uh, so what I did is I picked out uh, the one or two best uh, pressings that I had and Frankenstein pieces together made made the best pressings the best pieces uh, the most desirable that I wanted to keep from my collection and everything else I I uh, set aside and uh, those went uh, in a into kind of a uh, trade or uh, sell pile that's what I was I was just gonna do I decided I was gonna do that so uh, what I did is after I had all that done I reached out to a couple friends um, Diggy you know Helmet Diggy Bill uh, Brandon Mitch uh, you know a couple of a couple of the rest of you guys um, and kind of uh, got a good feel as to what they thought I should do. Uh, ultimately, the way I look at it is I, I wasn't weakening my collection by getting rid of those things. Uh, it's always always kind of um, kind of uh, intimidating, I guess is the right word. Uh, getting rid of original pressings um, because you know they're they're not being pressed anymore. Some of the, some of those things hadn't been pressed in. 30, 40, 50 years or more. Um, but let's face it, I mean, I what I did when I traded these in, when you guys see what I got uh, for, for that, uh, I got I got a great value in trade at, at, uh, at our local store, one of our local stores. Um, 
it was a great deal on, on both ends. I got some great stuff that made my collection better. He got some great stuff that he turned over in an instant. I mean, he put a couple flip videos out and uh, those things turned uh, turned over in, in, in a week. Like he told me in, in the first two days, he had already sold like half the collection, which was awesome. Made me feel good, made him feel good that we were fair with each other. I got what I wanted in the end and he got something that he could use and his customers in the end got some really nice pieces that, uh, nice original pieces that you just, just don't usually walk into record stores and find. So uh, with that being said, that's what started this whole thing. Brandon um, switching over all his stuff and, uh, and I've started uh, doing the same. So um, I'm gonna show you at the end here. Um, uh, so first thing, I'm just gonna show a couple things I picked up today and a, and a couple nice uh, uh, internet uh, scores that I got as well as a couple cassettes. But at the end here, I'm gonna show you all the stuff that I ended up getting in trade, which is uh, kind of an overwhelming amount of things. Uh, so bear with me here, this might be a 20 minute video. We're already five, six minutes in and I haven't shown a record yet. So, uh, so let's jump in right here. Grail time. This has been in my want list for at least three years. Uh, you guys know this this album is super tough. It's origi an original 1990 German pressing of uh, Tesla's Five Man Acoustical Jam. Uh, this, even on Discogs or eBay, you don't see these things pop up for sale very often. And when you do, they are just outrageously priced. So, uh, like I said, this has been in my want list forever. Um, and what a great set this is. This is an unbelievable set. I mean, I, I, this takes me back to um, not necessarily 1990, but I, probably a couple summers after that, me and my friends cruising the town uh, during the summer, you know, those hot summer nights, jamming uh, the, either the cassette or the CD, depending on whose vehicle we were in, um, drinking beer, probably doing stuff we weren't supposed to be doing, but man, it, we, we spent many a nights listening to this album. Awesome, awesome album. Um, but this thing came up for, for, uh, for sale on uh, Discogs uh, probably two or three weeks ago, uh, somewhere in there. And uh, I ended up, uh, as soon as I saw it, I contacted the seller and uh, he said it was, uh, he listed it as VG plus VG plus, but we all know how that goes with uh, online sales. Uh, contacted the seller. Um, he had a, a price as well as a make offer. First thing I did was just introduce myself, told him I was interested, and asked if he could send some pictures of the outer sleeve, the inner sleeves, uh, the vinyl itself, as well as the center labels. The, anytime I ask for pictures uh, for a record from an online seller, that's I, you, I have to be that specific, and you should be that specific as well. You want to see the outer sleeve. You want to see the front and the back. You want to see any you know any spine damage. Ask him if there's any spine damage. Um, as well as the inner sleeves. I want to see the inner sleeves and I want to see the vinyl, you know, just a, just an overall picture of the vinyl, as well as the center labels. I want to see if those spindles have been beat up, you know, if, if they got spindle marks on them on the center label. Uh, he was very, uh, very cooperative and sent me those uh, pictures right away. Um, we struck up a conversation through email and uh, worked out a deal. Uh, made him an offer, uh, and I think with shipping, this thing, um, I think it was right around forty-five dollars is what it ended up being, which which is a steal. It, that, it's a, I mean, you couldn't. This is a two LP set that would run. On, uh, even if this were pressed today, this would be a thirty-five dollar record, um, just because it's two LPs, two inner sleeves. Um, really, really nice, and it's a German pressing. It sounds phenomenal. So really stoked, super stoked, Andy. Uh, super stoked to have this in the collection. Tesla Five Man Acoustical Jam. Um, Got on a Springsteen kick, obviously, after his new record came out, uh, Western Stars, and decided I needed to pick up, fill a couple holes in my Springsteen collection. So as you can see, I, you guys remember I, in one of my last videos, there it is right there, you can see it, I've been spinning the hell out of that, uh, Devils and Dust, another amazing Springsteen album. And so I uh, was able to pick up uh, Lucky Town, and this was uh, another was a super deal. It was like 18 bucks on Discogs, and this is from what 1992, 93, not 1992. Um, so an original pressing, uh, record club pressing, I believe. Um, doesn't say on here, but I think this was either a BMG or a Columbia House uh, pressing, but. Uh, 
there you have that. So those are the two things that I picked up online. And then um, I went in to uh, Trusty Chords in Edwardsville, Trusty Chords Record Shop. Big, always love giving a shout out to Colin over at Trusty Chords Record Shop. Um, two weeks ago when the Springsteen came out, I was there right when they opened, picked up everything, and was supposed to get this album as well, but uh, his Universal uh, shipment hadn't shown up yet. Uh, so I was like, well, just let me know when it gets in. Well, like at one o'clock, he ends up messaging me and says, hey, if you hadn't have been uh, such an early bird and so impatient, you could have picked up this today as well. So needless to say, he stuck it back, held on to it. Uh, I was very lax in getting in there, but this is Lucas Nelson and Promise with Real. Uh, turn off the news, build a garden. Have not had a chance to give this a, a listen yet, but it's their, their new thing. Love Lucas Nelson and Promise of the Real. Um, can't wait to uh, to give this one a spin. So thank you, Colin, for holding on to that one for me. Uh, so just picked that one up today. Uh, he had also posted um, a flip video on Instagram and uh, uh, Facebook, uh, on his Facebook page and Instagram account, uh, of a new rock collection that he had picked up last week. And I, and I love that he's trying to stay on top of everything. He's trying, really trying to do everything right, which is, which is awesome. And I'll show you that here. We'll go into depth more when I show you this next record. But he's, he's doing things like um, he's got a very, very good social media presence. You know, he's got an Instagram account. He's just opened a YouTube account, which uh, if you guys want to check it out, I think you maybe only got one or two videos. And it's just a flip video. I don't think, Colin, if you're watching this, you need to make an introduction video on YouTube. Welcome yourself to the vinyl community um, and uh, people can check it out. So if you want to check out uh, uh, Colin's page at Trusty Chords Record Shop, uh, check, I'll try to remember to leave a link below. Uh, check out the link in the in the, uh, the box below, the description box below. But anyway, he puts, puts up the videos on uh, Instagram and uh, Facebook. And uh, as he was flipping through the stuff, I noticed this and asked him if he would set it aside. It's a uh, an original Sammy Hagar rematch uh, with in, in the shrink, you know, original pressing uh, with the uh, Capital Value uh, label on it, as well as the original uh, Sound Warehouse price sticker. Love the fact that it's in shrink and it still has the Capital Value uh, hype on there. This will go great in my Sammy Hagar uh, box that I'm working on. I'm just finishing that thing up. But what I really like, and, and, and as, as I was saying, check this out. So. Colin's doing everything right over there. Um, so what he's done is he's taken and he's put, um, if you guys can see, I don't know. So you see on here, it says like uh, 82, 82 reissue in shrink, Winchester pressing, media VG plus cover VG plus. So anything over a certain amount, he's doing two things. And anything that he gets in uh, that's used, that's over a certain amount um, he's putting in these these nice resealable super clear sleeves it just makes everything a little bit more presentable the the color really pops through um, you know those other ones are really cloudy they make things look just worse than they are you know an album might look pretty worn or beat up but putting them in these these sleeves makes the colors really pop they're really bright really vivid colors and then he's also taking it one step further and identifying not only whether you know what pressing it is what plant it was pressed at but the uh, condition of the cover as well as the condition of the the uh, media inside which is great uh, it's he's used it as a learning tool um, for you know to educate his customers too uh, some customers have asked why is this pressing of Led Zeppelin for $12 and this pressing uh, $18 or this pressing is $20 and you know, using it as, as a learning tool, not only condition, but the pressing matters as well. So thank you for holding on to that for me uh, as well, Colin. Um, and then I found a couple other things as I was digging. Um, been wanting to get a nice reissue of this and it doesn't get much nicer. Uh, King Diamond, Abigail, uh, this is the music on vinyl, 180 gram uh, reissue. Such a great album. Uh, can't wait to give it a spin and, and hear it uh, the way it, it uh, was meant to be heard. So glad to pick that one up. And then um, two more here. 
saw this and I had never seen one of these. This is, of course, we're all familiar with this LA Guns art. This is the uh, original LA Guns artwork on the um, on their debut. Uh, but it says, uh, this is Riot on Sunset, the best of LA Guns. So I had no idea this was even out there. This is like a 2014, 2012 or 2014 release. 2012 uh, Deadline Music release. So it, it's an actual, um, official release uh and it looks like it's got some some stuff off of the first couple uh albums you know there's just some stuff from cocked and loaded as well as the uh debut here so uh this is a limited from what i could tell on discogs this is a limited release on blue vinyl so glad to glad to pick that up uh, i think it was 14 bucks glad to see that and then uh last but not least on the vinyl today so stoked to see this uh 1957 uh, mono second pressing of Here's Little Richard. Just a phenomenal record. I mean, just it doesn't get any better. Really nice and clean on here. I'd say, um, being conservative here, the cover is, um, I mean, I've, I've seen better, but it is what it is. It's, it's a VG cover, uh, being conservative on it. You know, there's, there's a couple spots here, but it's, it's really nice and crisp and colorful. Uh, nothing's nothing's faded and the whites are really bright the colors are bright on the back um, just the smallest amount of corner dings but this is a second issue um, not, still 1957 second issue mono uh, black and gold label on uh, specialty records uh, it's the SP 2100 uh, I was stoked to find this for um, for nine bucks um, the vinyl is VG plus or VG plus are better. I mean, it is just, I came home, cleaned it and gave it a spin. I mean, look at that. It is a beauty. Just, just amazing. Uh, sounds tremendous. Hearing this thing in mono, uh, was just, uh, a treat. Let me tell you. And, and as you guys know, if you followed my channel at all, I'm not going to worry about putting that back in the, uh, putting that back in the, uh, sleeve. But uh, if you guys have followed my channel at all over the years, you know how big of a Little Richard fan I am. Uh, so you guys seem to be talking about that. Are you saw how easy that was to get uh, get that out? I'll just put it right back in in here, seal it up, and we are good to go. Put it right back on the shelf. Uh, but you guys know I'm a huge Little Richard fan, and this has all those great hits: Tutti Fruity, True Fine Mama, uh, Can't Believe You Want to Leave, Ready Teddy. Slipping and sliding, long tall Sally, Miss Ann, oh why rip it up, Jenny Jenny, she's got it. I mean, what an album! So, man, less than ten bucks for this, I was over the moon. Just great. That that that's my favorite find of the day. And then as I was walking out, I ended up grabbing a couple things, uh, cassette wise. Um, he had picked these up in, an, in another collection. So uh, these, this one I didn't know if I had or not. I'm working on getting my, uh, my cassette collection out. I'm going to work on a new uh, cassette storage solution, working on a shelf so I can get my cassettes out of boxes and get them up so I can know exactly what I have. But a uh, uh, really nice uh, later issue on the clear chrome cassette, Kiss Alive 2. Smashes, thrashes, and hits. Another... Uh, Chrome cassette, one of my favorites, Alive 3, Chrome as well. So this thing's gonna sound as good as a cassette could can sound. Uh, th these next few, I'm, I was stoked. Uh, this is You Wanted the Best, You Got the Best from 96. Another, uh, and it's on that red Chrome, which is nice. Um, you, you just don't see these around another one that's from 97 greatest kiss and this one i was stoked about psycho circus on cassette how awesome is that that's killer um and then i did grab one uh def leopard vault 1980 to 1995 so this came out in 96 i believe uh but yeah those th those were uh, killer, killer finds. Uh, I was so stoked to find those. Um, so that's all the stuff I picked up today. Man, we are at 19 minutes, guys. I apologize. Um, we're at 19 minutes, and I haven't even begun to start talking about this big box of stuff. So um, I'm probably going to end this video here. Um, no, I can't end this video here. You guys, 
just just hang in there it won't take long I'm just gonna go through them and just gonna show it so anyway I traded in all that stuff um, at trusty cords um, Colin was great he got what he wanted I got what I wanted uh, you'll see what I ended up getting for it I, I took in I don't know, it was maybe a box of 130 or so 130 140 albums and ended up getting uh, probably just about as many in return uh, I'd say you know close to a hundred in uh, in in return but what I did is I upgraded uh, and I got all these new reissues so let's just jump right in and show you so um, it, for my he gave me store credit and ended up uh, popping on a bunch of these new reissues that I, I didn't have uh, just for sound quality there was there was nothing uh, that sounds any better than these so this is the uh, the first Led Zeppelin and on these some of them I ended up getting the um, I think the majority of them I got the standard issue uh, but there are some that have bonus like like two discs um, with demos and things like that but the majority of them I just I just went with decided to go with the uh, the standard so there's uh, Led Zeppelin one Let's get these back in here Zeppelin two. I love the uh, the way they were really true to the original artwork and the way every you know, the inserts and everything on these. But uh, nothing sounds any better. Zeppelin three, four. By now you guys know where this is going. Next we're gonna jump in there with. Houses of the Holy, and these were all brand new, sealed. I've opened these up, cleaned them, spun them, uh, and I keep the, uh, if they've got a hype sticker or anything on, on the shrink, that's all inside. This one, um, I left it, I just split the side here and open it that way. Actually, no, this, this is, uh, yeah, it opens here this way, so here we go. Get the uh, physical graffiti. presence so like I said I didn't look at it as um, weakening my collection I looked at it as strengthening it and through the outdoor because uh, like I said I, I was able to keep my best one or two pressings and uh, also have the new reissues and you know as far as sound quality and listening uh, the listenability there's nothing that's gonna sound any better than these unless you have mofi pressings or something and even then the mofi pressings might not sound as good as these these, these things sound amazing so there's coda um, also while I was at it I went ahead and picked up some Pink Floyd so we have the uh, Pink Floyd self title uh, Piper at the Gates of Dawn There was still one or two, one one or two of these that I did not end up getting. Uh, Umaguma, here is Adam Hart Mother. So see, we're flying through these, but giving you an idea of all the stuff that I got. What's this metal? by clouds I even love the rounded corners I mean they kept these these reissues they did them right uh, kept them very very much true to form dark side of the moon I got a dog upstairs going crazy I don't know if you guys can hear that or not but oh well wish you were here and this one, of course, comes in this, the, the black bag. I just put the black bag on the outside in the back. Um, but there, the man on fire covered there. Then we're moving along to animals. And the wall. There we go. These things were, like I said, they were... Um, they're not cheap, as you guys know. If you've, you've priced these, 
uh, division bell. So I, I took it as a really great opportunity to uh, really move my uh, collection to the next level and get these because if I had to lay out the money for these, um, it just it just wouldn't have happened. Uh, I did get some uh, some of the Beatles in mono. Uh, I would love to have the box set, but uh, that thing's just way too pricey. Uh, so I'll just piece them together or. Maybe one day I'll find one of those box sets uh, for the right price, but for now, I'm gonna settle for Rubber Soul. And Revolver. So I picked those two up. Then I was able to uh, grab this uh, BLS, Black Label Society, Grimmest Hits, killer, killer album. Great pressing, <laughs> love that olive green. Uh, old Warner Brothers olive green uh, color there. Another BLS. Uh, this is um, Sonic Brew, the 20th anniversary that just came out in uh, May. This thing, they did a great job with this as well. This sounds amazing. This is, I think, on that uh, silver, silver and blue splatter vinyl, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Jackal. Uh, this is the Jackal self-titled album from what, 92, 93? 1992, music on vinyl uh, pressing. Sounds phenomenal, did a great job with this. Uh, of course, this has uh, uh, I Stand Alone, Dirty Little Mind, Down On Me, Killer. Uh, the Lumberjack, which is kind of, you know, kind of corny, uh, but uh, really, really good stuff. Awesome. I picked up this to, uh, to kind of add to the, um, Motley Crue collection, uh, Saints of Los Angeles. Uh, this is a um, original 2008 pressing. My son used to love this album. It's not a bad album, honestly. Uh, then um, I have all my uh, original pressings of Pantera and am getting, and I have a lot of the uh, reissues. I believe these are the 180 gram uh, two LP um, Rhino reissues, uh, yeah, Atco Rhino. Um, but I had traded this one to Brandon whenever he uh, traded me the uh, original pressing of uh, Cowboys from Hell. Uh, that was kind of uh, what I had to do to get that. I had to give him my uh, reissue so he had something to listen to. Uh, so I just had to pick up another one of these. And then I already have. Uh, Vulgar Display and uh, a couple of the others, but I needed uh, a Far Beyond Driven. Yeah, Great Southern Trend Kill, I think, was the other one that I had. Uh, so there's Far Beyond. Nice to score this one. Uh, Alice in Chains, Jar of Flies and Sap. Uh, another MOV, uh, Music on Vinyl, Pressing. Great, great album and EP. Good, good stuff there. Um, also picked up this uh, Judas Priest, Firepower. What a killer album this is. Uh, like I said, I've had this stuff for a couple months, guys. I just haven't gotten around to showing it. But I've spun the hell out of a lot of this stuff. This being one of them. This thing has seen a significant turntable time. What a great album. Um, disappointment. Huge disappointment here. I was stoked to get this, the Black Crows. Uh, Shake Your Money Maker. Uh, this was uh, their 1990, what, 1990? Yeah, 1990 debut on uh, Deaf American. Um, this is a, a reissue. Um, it sounds terrible. Uh, forget who it was. Somebody recently, oh, it was uh, Robert Fithen. Uh, Robert had picked up one of these and uh, was saying how it sounded just like garbage. And I knew I had, had picked one of these up, but I hadn't spun it yet. So I popped it open after seeing Robert's video uh, last weekend and uh, picked it, uh, opened it up, put it on the table. And, and you're right, man, it sounds terrible. It's one of the worst sounding pressings I've got in my collection. So I would highly advise you guys not to, not to pick that pressing up. Um, you can look on Discogs, people are talking about it. it I, I wish I had done my homework. Uh, sounds sounds terrible. But on the flip side, uh, Black Crow's uh, Southern Harmony and Musical Companion, uh, this would be from uh, 1992. So this would be the, I think this is the follow-up 
to uh, to shake your money maker. What a what a great album. This thing sounds just excellent. Sounds amazing. So there's that. So you get the best of both worlds there. You got the the crappy uh, shake your money maker, which uh, they just compressed it too much. It sounds just flat. Uh, no dynamics whatsoever, and then this thing sounds amazing. Uh, another music on vinyl, uh, reissue, repress. Um, you know, an audio file pressing here for Cinderella's Night Songs. Glad to pick that one up, as well as the MOV pressing of Long Cold Winter. So glad to add both those to the collection as well. Like I said, I have originals of all those, but it's nice to have have those MOV pressings as well as this one. I uh, don't believe this is a music on vinyl, but it is a uh, reissue 180 gram audiophile pressing of uh, Bad Company's self-titled debut. One of my favorite albums of the 70s. Love this, love this album to death. And then one that uh, I did not have an original pressing of, so I uh, was stoked to get a, uh, a reissue, which is gonna sound amazing too, is Journey's Greatest Hits. that love me some uh, Ray LaMontagne this is gossip in the grain have not had a chance to listen to this one yet but uh, anytime I can uh, find some some Ray that I don't have I just it's that easy listening put it on and just kind of chill uh, whether you want to sit back and just relax do some work um, or just some of you if you're wine drinkers or beer drinkers or whatever you want to do grab us some soda or whatever sit back and just chill the, the picture on the back kind of says it all that that's kind of the mood of of ray's music just sit sit back empty room dim the lights put it on and chill love it uh jason isbell uh something more uh something more than free you guys know i'm a huge fan of uh Southeastern and anything Jason does with the 400 units great as well uh, So I had to pick this one up did not have this one picked it up I think this is a follow-up if I'm uh, not mistaken. Yeah 2015 so this would be the follow-up to Southeastern Which I've heard great great things of I just haven't heard it uh, and then this is uh, Jason with the 400 unit at the uh, live at the Ryman. I Think this just came out last year or two years ago Yeah 2018 last year so nothing nothing fancy here but a die cut cover really really cool this one I was stoked to get because I have really tried to get this one since it came out and it's been sold out even through Amazon it was so hard to get this is a uh, Greg Allman's uh, final album Southern Blood uh, this is on that uh, to me it, it looks like a root beer colored but they call it like a maple wood or a hard wood uh, it, it is a beautiful, I'm going I'm to show you, I don't typically show um, show the records, but let me show you this one real quick while I've got your attention, because it is gorgeous. Look, great little picture of Greg. This album is phenomenal. I mean, just a mind-blowing album. You can't, this probably won't do it justice, but it's like a, like a wood wood grain colored vinyl it's a beautiful vinyl it sounds great it's uh, such a such a wonderful album um it definitely uh, should pays pays tribute to greg um you know he knew this was going to be the last record he made and they did a, a bang up job with it so if you if you guys love the almond brothers or any of that southern rock or greg and you don't have that do yourself a favor and pick that up it is amazing uh, moving right along, uh, music on vinyl pressing of the uh, Chris Christopherson uh, debut, just called Christopherson. Uh, so many great hits on here. Obviously, obviously, with Chris, Chris wrote so many great hits, but uh, this is him doing his uh, his big hits. Um, you know, me and Bobby McGee, just the name of the songs that you guys would would be familiar with. Help me make it through the night. Um, let's see. For the Good Times, uh, Sunday Morning Coming Down, as well as so many other great things. But what a great album. Uh, one of my probably top 50 country albums of all time right there. 
uh, been moving right along. Willie Nelson and Merle Haggard, Django and Jimmy. This is their uh, their kind of duet album that they put out just before Merle passed, just a few months before Merle passed. Uh, really, really good stuff. Double LP. And then uh, was able to finally grab these Dixie Chicks uh, albums. I'm glad they finally put these out. Uh, these girls are super talented. So say what you will, think what you will about their politics and Natalie's big mouth, but they are super, super talented. And uh, the wife and I have seen them a couple times in, in uh, concert and just a great show. These girls are, are tremendously talented, great singers, great songwriters, uh, and great instrumentalists. And probably when you get right down to it, great people, but um, you know, some people, I don't like to get my politics and music mixed up. So fly not that I don't respect her uh, her uh, having the opportunity to say what she wants I just wouldn't do it so there we go fly great album and then uh, this is uh, home so I think I need one more of their albums glad to be able to use this uh, take this opportunity and, and grab these things and then last but not least, I picked up uh, Kid Rock's Devil Without a Cause. Uh, I already have an original pressing of this, but it's a totally different cover. Um, so I was able to, uh, to get this one, another 2LP uh, reissue. So glad to have all that. And that looks like that's everything, guys. You, uh, you saw that's the stuff that I traded in. Uh, big shout out to Trusty Chords Records. Check their... Uh, if you want to check out and find more about their um, their channel, check down below. Uh, click the link. Uh, they may not may or may not have uh, um, and too much content on there right now, but I'm gonna holler at Colin and tell him to uh, maybe make a uh, introduction video, and uh, who knows. But give him a follow. Um, check them out. And if you're in the St. Louis area, uh, Metro St. Louis area, Illinois side of the river, check out Trusty Chords Records. Um, and if not, just Shop local. Support your, your local record shops. Guys, as always, I thank you for tuning in. I hope everybody's doing well. We'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.